Hello friends, welcome to Insight Saiken Initiative. This program is about the prelims high yield series. As a part of this program, previously we discussed about different different subjects and different themes. In case if you miss out, you can find those videos in the relevant playlist. Of course, the playlist named as the UPSC prelims series or rapid revision. There you can find the previous videos. In this video, the theme we pick here is about the environment. And by the way, this video might be you are seeing not in the regular time, it may delay it due to the power interruption. Otherwise, our videos generally will be telecasted between the 9 pm to 9 30 pm. Okay, so now in today's video, we are going to discuss about following six areas first, COP28 outcomes mainly, then we will discuss about the framework behind the COP28 that is UNFCCC. What does it mean? Then, the key highlights of the COP28, what are the outcomes, major outcomes? and highlights as well. Then India led initiative. Of course, in this COP28, two initiatives specifically led by India. What are those two initiatives? Then major outcomes of the COP27 and India's updated nationally determined contribution NDC. Okay, this uh, NDC outcomes we will discuss at the end of the video where we will touch upon the topics like carbon intensity and the renewable energy targets, percentage of the renewable energy in the overall renewable in the overall energy, those kind of the topics we will discuss. So these are the six areas we will discuss in this particular video. Are we clear? Now let's see first COP28. So before we discuss about COP28, we have to understand what is COP stands for. COP stands for Conference of Parties. Then the parties, who are the parties here? Governments are the parties here from where across the globe. And these parties, these parties are parties to whom? Okay, parties means obviously they must adhere to some agreement. They are party to one agreement. They are party to which agreement? They are party to UNFCCC, UN Convention on Climate Change. So to this agreement, they are parties. And when this agreement was signed, in fact, this agreement was signed in 1992. But this agreement came into effective in 1994. After this, these parties, they started meeting from 1995 onwards. So those annual meetings are nothing but known as what? COP summits. And tell me guys, when was the COP first summit was happened? Where is the location I mean to ask? Where was the first COP summit was held? Okay. Next, these COP meetings, they started in 1995 onwards. Total countries which subscribe to this UNFCCC, they are 197. Even this Paris Climate Agreement the, is a byproduct of the UNFCCC. So we can consider as UNFCCC is a parent party to the Paris Climate Agreement. The Secretariat of UNFCCC present in Bonn, Germany. Then we'll come back to the COP28. COP28 is the 28th meeting of the COP summit. Okay, And while you're listening to this video, in case if you need Regarding the rest of the COP summits highlights, please ask me, I will make another video where I will cover from the COP 1 to COP 26, all the important COP summits. It depends upon your demand. Okay, next, these COP meetings, COP 28, it was held in Dubai, UAE, and uh, they mainly focused here on particular following four themes. Number one, technology and innovation. Second one, inclusion. Third one, frontline communities. And the fourth one is the finances. So these are the four themes they focused on. Next, here in this COP28, even they discussed about the global stock take report. Here you may understand what is a global stock take report. Global stock take report is like an appraisal kind of assessment. Assessment of one work. Which work? Assessment of COP21 climate agreement. Okay, whatever we agreed in COP21, how the progress we are going. To, regarding that assessment is nothing but here global stock tech report global stock tech report is mandated through paris climate agreement in paris climate agreement we have article 14 clause 1 through thus this this global stock tech report came into existence it will check the implementation of paris agreement and uh, assess collective privilege progress towards achieving the this agreement goal how the countries are achieving the goal and here COP28 major outcomes and India led initiative we will discuss one by one. The first major outcome is loss and damage fund. Actually, the concept of loss and damage fund they started in COP27, but in COP28, somewhat it came into shape. Okay, we we'll discuss about the funding and all these things, but still there is a lack of clarity that how, how countries will contribute, how much, and how the money will be allocated. But nonetheless, they added some uh, they added some, you know, like um, some models, modalities to this loss and damage fund. Countries reached to an agreement to operationalize the loss and damage fund. 
and this fund is mainly regarding providing compensation to countries which are facing the climate change we all know the students countries which contributed to the climate change generally they are the developed countries and they are the industrialized countries but countries which are facing problems due to climate change they are the underdeveloped countries and sometimes even the island nations also they are facing lot of issues so here in examination point of view the the important thing is world bank is acting as interim host for this loss and damage fund okay for how many years four years four years next all the developing countries are eligible and apart from the developing countries there is one specific quota is also allocated earmarked for the least developed countries as well as the small island countries for them special quota is also allocated then second outcome framework on transitioning from the fossil fuels for the first time even the developed countries also acknowledge that it is a time that we have to transition from fossil fuels okay that is we have to encourage the more renewable fuels the interesting thing is this decision was taken in a cop summit which held in a country which is completely depend on the fossil fuels that is i mean this dubai uae okay that is the reason strong opposition came from the oil producing states in spite of that countries agreed that especially the developed countries also agreed that it is a need to transitioning from the fossil fuels okay and they also agreed that by 2050 we need to reach the net zero levels this is the target overall they 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 agreed upon but india is having a different year for the net zero so comment your answer students what is the target year for the india net zero what is the target year for the india net zero comment this next third one credible target for renewable energy and energy efficiency so this outcome is related to the target regarding the renewable energy as well as improving the energy efficiency first we'll see the renewable energy this is saying that we have to triple the global renewable energy to how much to 11000 gigawatts and in terms of the energy efficiency so the gains of the energy efficiency we should improve from 2 percentage to 4 percentage by 2030 these two goals are related to 2030 only so the energy efficiency gains we have to improve from 2 percentage to 4 percentage you all know that how energy how efficient a particular uh, equipment generally the star ratings will be given in india and even we are moving a lot towards the energy efficiency batteries and all okay india also highlighted it's a role and how it is acting as a front runner in both these areas next the outcome number 4 this is regarding the global goal on adaptation so this is all about funding towards countries which require adaptation towards the climate change so that we can achieve the 1.5 degrees or 2 degrees goal of the paris climate agreement so here we will help to countries so that country will adapt to the change in climate and they also release the draft text which addressed the critical issues okay that means adaptation means regarding which issues on which issues the adaptation is going to be so the adaptation is related to climate induced water scarcity reduction that means whatever the water scarcity comes due to the climate change okay we have to ready for that then improving the or encouraging the climate resilient food and agriculture production this is also and the third one is strengthening the resilience against the climate related health impacts that means whatever the health impacts related to climate change regarding that adaptation methods have to be improved so this is the outcome number 4 then outcome number 5 global cooling pledge so this is mainly related to emissions coming from the coolants okay out of the this uh, entire unfccc around 66 nations they are, they are the signatory and they committed to reduce cooling related emissions we all know that we use different types of cooling systems like acs and all these things and uh, they are not out of the problems they have the emissions problems cooling related emissions in all the sectors we should reduce by at least 68 percentage globally by 2050 compared to when compared to 2020 that means in 2022 if you take emissions are at 100 percentage by 2050 we should reduce by at least 68 percentage that means we should bring that to the 32 percentage then sixth one declaration to triple nuclear energy that means this is regarding the tripling of nuclear energy by 2050 it was endorsed by 22 national governments we all know that government of india is also thinking to encourage private players into nuclear energy 
and tell me students if you use the nuclear energy in the hydrolysis of in the hydrolysis of or electrolysis of the water and producing the hydrogen then that hydrogen is known as what okay the hydrogen which is produced by nuclear energy what is the name of that hydrogen okay green hydrogen or brown hydrogen or like there are different types of names are there yeah which hydrogen next seventh one coal transition accelerator here france france took the initiative and in, in collaboration with various other countries it is it is you know like leading the initiative of coal transition accelerator as a part of this knowledge sharing and policy decision and financial support will be given so that countries will be transition from the coal to clean energy then eighth one coalition for high ambition multi level partnership here the full full form is very important 65 national governments they signed this champ commitment this is mainly related to the cooperation in the area of planning financing implementation and monitoring of the climate strategies next ninth one climate finance unf this uncted united nation conference on trade and development uncted so it estimating that so the wealthy nations they owe money okay to whom developing countries how much they owe around 500 billion dollars by when by 2025 of course by 2030 developed countries they have to contribute around 1.55 trillion dollars so out of this 500 billion dollars of course that money will be spread across various areas such as 250 billion dollars will be used for the mitigation of the climate change 100 billion dollars for the adaptation and 150 billion dollars for the loss and damage okay so this was confirmed by the developed countries under the paris agreement 2015 but the problem is how you know like uh, how effectively they will contribute this funding that matters a lot and at least here they kept 100 billion per year 100 billion dollars per every year this is what they kept as for the floor value that is the base value next india led initiative at cop 28 that is number one global river cities alliance initiative and the second initiative india took that is the green credit initiative these are the two initiative indian government took in the cop 28 the first one is global river cities alliance this is about sharing the knowledge sharing the best practices related to keeping rivers clean okay this proposed by india here let's see in india this program actually related to this uh, namami gange program so this is led by the national mission for clean ganga under the ministry of jal shakti and government of india so this national mission for clean ganga they proposed this one it covers around 275 global river cities and around 11 countries are participating in this this facilitates knowledge exchange river city twinning and dissemination of the best practices okay twin twin river cities also will be declared as a part of this member countries these are the member countries in this program secretariat of the grca here national institute for urban affairs okay national institute for urban affairs it is acting as a secretariat for grca and the second initiative india proposed that is the green credit initiative according to this if any country okay specifically if they put efforts related to water conservation and afforestation those countries will get the green credits those green credits they can trade so that they can get the they can earn the money as well so that can be this can be especially useful to the african countries in india also mncs and local governments so they can go for this kind of water conservation and afforestation program they can earn the this green credit this is also one of the initiative so in india who certifies this green credits it will be certified by indian council of forestry research and education this organization will certify this one next cop 27 we will see cop 27 it, it was held in sharm el sheikh egypt and the theme is together for implementation and to renew and extend the agreements reached in the historic paris agreement so this is about the continuation of the paris agreement regarding the major outcomes of cop 27 the major one is for the first time the concept of loss and damage fund for vulnerable countries it was proposed according to this a five a five year work program was launched to promote the climate technology solution in developing countries for every five years this will be assessed how the developed countries are giving technology to the developing countries and the second one is regarding the mitigation so every year two global dialogues will happen till 2030 regarding how the mitigation 
uh, strategies are implementing and how the necessary help is given to the developing and underdeveloped countries and as a part of this mitigation strategies they will like to completely phase down the coal and completely phase out the inefficient fossil fuel subsidies so these are the programs of the mitigation thing and the sharmel shake adaptation agenda this is about the 30 adaptation outcomes and action on water adaptation and resilience initiative this is regarding the they regarding the importance of water as both climate change problem and potential solution that means how to conserve the water african carbon market initiative this is about how our african countries can earn green credits so and uh, how they can uh, pro i mean further progress the global renewable alliance according to this all the technologies required for the energy transition in order to ensure an accelerated energy transition that means whichever the technologies helps in the energy transition all those technologies will uh, as smooth as possible they will be given to the developing countries next the third topic is intended nationally determined contributions ndc so india modified and they announced their ndc in cop 28 they are regarding the emissions intensity generally emissions intensity will be calculated per unit of the gdp and it is not any sector specific for every unit of gdp the emission intensity will be calculated so in this india modified the emission intensity that so we would like to reduce the emission intensity by 45 percentage compared to when compared to 2005 so compared to 2005 by 2030 we would like to reduce the emission intensity by how much 45 percentage already out of the entire target india achieved 21 percentage of its emission targets next non fossil fuel based energy india would like to meet around 50 percentage of its entire energy through non fossil fuel based energy by 2030 and by 2030 we would like to generate around 500 gigawatts of the non fossil power as well and regarding the absolute emissions we would like to cut down the absolute emissions by 1 billion tons 1 billion tons by 2030 and we would like to achieve the net zero emissions by 2070 so these are the outcomes actually one of the students suggested that so what are the questions you are asking give a pause and uh, uh, tell me the answers then and there itself so that will be good so here today onwards i'll give the pause okay after the question and i'll reveal the answer as well here consider the following statement india is one of the 12 mega diversity countries of the world second one in general species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the pole so which of the statements are right the answer is c both one and two statements are right now as we reach to the end of this video in this video as a part of the upsc prelims high yielding series in today's video we discussed about the environment if you really need another video on the cop summit feel free to give your opinion definitely i'll make a video for you i hope this video is useful to your preparation thanks for watching this video have a great day jai hind